How's it going ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Super Luigi Galaxy. Last time we did a few stars here in the engine room. And that was a whole capture card ago. No, my capture card has not died. It's perfectly fine, but... I got a new Elgato. I figure that we might as well just record in the original source format. And, you know... Good stuff. Good times. Okay, actually, the real explanation is because I got sick and tired of fighting with the other one. So I'm actually recording in the original source format, so... Yeah, the quality may be a little... You know, not quite as good. But at the very least, I think the colors should be a little closer to what they're supposed to be, which has kind of been the problem for a while, but... Anyway... So, time for a fast foe comet. And I died already! Wow, that's a great start to the video. That's crazy, man. Yes, I want to try again. God! I have to remember this is not Galaxy 2. I've been playing a lot of Mario Galaxy 2 lately, so I'm used to how that works. How it just put you back in the level you left off on. Unlike in this game where it asks, Do you want to try again? Yes, of course I want to try again. Clearly, I want to try again, like right now. I really don't know why they decided that was a good idea in the first game, but oh well. So this is the Toxbox speed run, made significantly more difficult because Luigi has slippery footing. I mean, it's not hard, but it's a little threatening. But it's no Stone Cyclone, I assure you. Stone Cyclone Galaxy. Oh God, that place is horrible. I absolutely hate Stone Cyclone. It's terrible. It is so bad. Like, so bad. That, that is a stage you could probably spend a good maybe 10-15 minutes on and keep on dying. Because I think they made that stage almost too fast. Like, I know they were trying to make the stage harder, but that's not how you make a stage harder, Nintendo. By making everything super duper fast and damn near unpredictable? I mean, come on. It's obnoxious. Unlike this stage, which is relatively easy. I'd say the worst part's actually not the tox boxes. I would say it's probably these things, because they move so fast that sometimes you don't have much of a chance to, you know, get on top of them. Anyway. Hop over here on the magic little box and grab the star. One of the best parts about the old Elgato is that, for the most part, there isn't too much lag when I record, so I can actually look at it in real time, and it looks mostly the same. So, that's something I do like about older capture cards, is that it actually, at least with Elgato, it records in real time as opposed to having a delay. So let's say I didn't have much of a... Like I didn't have a connection to a TV at the time. I could just record off the computer and it would be fine. So, yeah, I mean there is a slight, slight delay, but not too bad. Anyway, heading off to the Sea Slide Galaxy. We're about to wrap this piece of shit galaxy up. I'm sorry, I don't like this galaxy. It's boring. It's just a ring. I've already went on that rant. I don't need to make it again. But anyway. I mentioned that I was playing Mario Galaxy 2. Let's start there. Um, one reason I was playing Galaxy 2 is for many other reasons that I play video games. I was watching Nintendo Capri Sun, and I was inspired to play it. Also, this is what B Luigi looks like. He looks so much better than B Mario, doesn't he? He actually looks like a bee instead of a hornet. Actually, Luigi kind of... You know, he kind of does. He does kind of look like a bee. It's kind of cute. Sorry, I got distracted by Luigi's just amazing bee costume. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, Mario Galaxy 2, I was watching NCS, and I, I wanted to play some Mario Galaxy 2. I hadn't played the game in a good long while, so I decided to uh, start playing the game again. 
and it's a lot of fun. I really do enjoy Mario Galaxy 2, and it really does make me want to do an LP over the game relatively soon. So, once again, I'm at a crossroads. What do I want to do next after Mario Galaxy? Because I'm going to assume Mario Galaxy is probably going to be the game that ends up taking the longest to complete. I mean, maybe it's not. Maybe it won't be, but... Um, I'm assuming that it will. So, uh... But... Maybe it won't. But after Mario Galaxy, or A Hat in Time, whichever takes longer, it makes me wonder, what game do I want to do next? I mean, I already know I want to do Mega Man, but... I'm talking, like, major projects and stuff. What do I want to do? Because I'm supposed to be getting a copy of the original Paper Mario in September, if it does come in on time for COVID. But, you know, things change. So that leaves Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door or Mario Galaxy 2 as the next potential big LP. And if I do Mario Galaxy 2, I am setting up a couple of rules. Um... Mario Galaxy 2 is a long game, and in some ways just kind of unnecessarily so, because the game has green stars, in case you guys aren't aware, and those green stars take way too damn long to complete. Like, it's another round of 120 stars, and you have to go back to those galaxies and stuff, and I really don't want to do that. So what I might do is just do a standard 120 star playthrough, and if it gets, you know, at least decent enough attention or whatever, then maybe I'll do the green stars as a separate playthrough. I don't know. But I highly doubt that I'll go back and do green stars because, honestly, I hate the green stars. I hate them. They're the most boring part of the game. And honestly, the most fun you have is just during the first playthrough. And all you get is just a hard freaking stage that, in my opinion, is unnecessarily difficult. I really... I mean, I like the perfect run as a stage concept, but good lord, couldn't they have just made it like, I don't know, like a speed run or something? Like, I don't know, maybe, like, they had different concepts, like, maybe some of the stage hazards move faster. Like, that would have been more fair. But, really, a Daredevil run? Just, what the hell, man? The ultimate test was already a challenging enough stage, I think that would have been perfectly fine. And then you had, like, one more galaxy that you unlocked, and that was the hard stage. Honestly, I think it should have been one of those, like, stages that really tested everything you knew and, like, tested all your power-ups and stuff. And, yeah, that would have been my preference. Like, maybe have a galaxy with two actual stars instead of just... <clears throat> instead of a mini-galaxy that had a comet on top of it. Like, imagine if the second star tested every single one of your power-up skills from the game. Like, it showed off every single power-up and stuff. And, you know, maybe even brought back some older power-ups from Mario Galaxy to see if you remembered how to use them properly. Like, um, like, this... Damn it, I'm forgetting the, the red star. Like, imagine if they brought back the red star. And, uh, you know, the ice flower and stuff, and you had to figure out how to use those. That would have been a really cool thing to add to the perfect, or to the Grandmaster Galaxy, because, you know, that would make you feel like a Grandmaster. You would have to learn how to use your skills properly. But, I don't know. That's just me. At least it's better than the freaking Champion's Road. I hate Champion's Road way more than I hate the Perfect Run. I have never actually beaten Champion's Road. It is one of those kind of stages where I just don't feel like beating it. I hate Champion's Road. It's a legitimately, like, I'll give him credit, it does test pretty much all your skills, but at the same time, good lord, there's way too much shit going on on the screen, and I know it's the final stage, 
But come on, Nintendo. You think you went a little overboard there? I also haven't beaten Darker Side of the Moon for Super Mario Odyssey. I almost called it Galaxy 3. That wouldn't have been accurate. <laughs> Although parts of that game feel like Mario Galaxy 3, like the moon level. And, you know what? I think they could have used a couple more kingdoms set in outer space. Like, I don't know, maybe, like, the Comet Observatory could have been its own kingdom and stuff. But come on, Nintendo, we have this big reservoir of awesome stages, and you're not using them. That's a little unfair. I mean, give some of your other stages some love. Like, I would have loved to be able to... I mean, I know Peach's Castle is there, but wouldn't it have been kind of cool if you actually got access to some of the stages from Mario 64 as just kind of a bonus? And those were like their own kingdoms, like the Hazy Maze Kingdom, that would have been cool. You would have gotten to revisit an HD version of the Hazy Maze Cave. Or how about uh, Womp's Kingdom, and you got to go through Womp's Kingdom, or Womp's Fortress. I think that would have been a really cool concept, or, you know, Delfino Kingdom with a huge interconnected overworld that allowed you to go to any part of that particular kingdom um, in Delfino Island. I don't know, just little things like that. I think they could do that for Odyssey 2. Like, they're making a Breath of the Wild 2. I really think that Odyssey 2 would be a fair thing to make. I think it's kind of interesting that Nintendo is actually making a direct sequel to a Zelda game. Because they very rarely do that. Like, Ocarina of Time was, I think, the last time they actually made a direct sequel. And I know all you Zelda fans, I know it's technically in the Downfall timeline or the Kid timeline or whatever it's in. I think it's in the Adult timeline where Link is victorious. And I know that the events of Majora's Mask lead directly into Twilight Princess, but... Um, and I like to think that Twilight Princess is Termina. Like, the, uh, Twilight Realm is Termina. Which, by the way, great game. I love... I'm loving Majora's Mask so far, but... I don't know. I think it's just weird. I think the last time they did that was in Majora's Mask, and then they just never did it again. Until Breath of the Wild. I guess no Zelda game was special enough to get it the sequel treatment. Like, honestly, I would have loved a sequel to The Wind Waker. I think that would have been really cool. And having, like, a direct sequel to The Wind Waker. Like, I don't know what they would have done. I think they could have created a new villain for The Wind Waker 2. And it would have been fine. I know technically Phantom Hourglass takes place in the same timeline, but... I don't know. I don't really consider that a direct sequel to um, The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. I think it's just kind of a boring... I think it's kind of a dumb idea. <laughs> like, controlling Link using the stylus? I don't think so. That's just dumb. It worked just as well as when they did it with Kirby. You guys remember Kirby Mass Attack? And if you don't, it was a game where, um... God, I forget the main villain's name. Um, whatever his name was. He was that weird pig skull guy. Um, he managed to split Kirby into ten and tried to take over Popstar. Needless to say, it did not work. <laughs> because Kirby. Um, I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of that game myself, but... You know, I know a lot of people that are, so... Um, if you guys enjoy Kirby Mass Attack, it's a good enough game. It has some legitimately decent songs. Like, um, the song that plays in a lot of the dark areas, you know, You know that song? I love that one. That one's a really good song. It's my favorite song in the entire game, but then again, I didn't get too much further than Area 2, because, I don't know, I just kept dying and dying and dying. I couldn't keep my Kirby's alive. Get up there, get up there. Oh man, what was that? That was a B fail. 
That was a B fail. What was that? Kind of reminds me of when we did that special stage in this level. Like, oh wait, no, it wasn't the uh, special stage. It was, um, it was the first level. Good lord. It has been a little bit since I recorded. I was actually waiting for my capture card to get in. I've made mention of that in uh, earlier parts. And I noticed a buzz whenever it was recording. I don't know what that's about, but... Hopefully it doesn't translate to the main recording. And that's just, like, something that's an issue with the software itself. I don't know. I, I don't know. Sometimes you'll get that whenever you get, like, some some minor interference with the um, recording software, but you don't see it in the main recording itself? What the hell was that? Physics fail, I tell ya. You know what a random thought just crossed my manner? I really want Starbucks right now. I really do. I know Starbucks is all frou-frou and stuff like that. Let a girl enjoy her Starbucks. I mostly enjoy Starbucks for the gimmicks. Because, good lord, Starbucks and Taco Bell, I swear, they're tag-teaming with the gimmicks. Like, I tell you, some of the silliest drinks I've ever had came from Starbucks. And it was, um, in particular, like, the Cookie Mocha. That is one of the gimmickiest coffees I've ever had in my life. It's good, though. I really do like it. But, you know, I, I'm... I'm assuming I've gained a couple of cavities due to, uh, Starbucks. Anywho, wake up, you bitch. I actually need you to spank me, unlike in Mario Sunshine. I mean, I remember Mario Sunshine, I didn't want you to spank me, but this time I actually want you to spank me, because that's how I'm gonna progress in the stage. What a paradox. The one time I don't want an enemy to spank me... And it's the time where I need them to spank me. So I guess this episode's gonna be, Please spank me, Cataquack. Please spank me. Because I remember uh, one of the episodes of Mario Sunshine was called Don't Spank Me, Cataquack. Excuse me. Don't spank me, Cataquack. But in this game, you need them to spank you, otherwise you're not gonna get high enough. I mean, Luigi, I guess, would get high enough, but I'm not sure. Let's actually test that theory. I'm very curious. I don't care about you, Cataquack. Oh, yes, I can! Okay, Luigi actually does jump high enough to get up there. Let's see if he can actually... No! No, I didn't wanna. I didn't wanna. Leave me alone, Flipbug. I don't care about you. And yes, that's that thing's official name. Actually... In between episodes, I did actually look up some of the enemies' names, just so I know what they are. That thing is called, like, the little cockroach thing. It's called a flip bug. I can't believe that's what that thing's name is. I would have expected it to have, like, a bland name, like, cockroach, but instead it's called flip bug. What an interesting name, you weird little thing. Congratulations. You win the Koro Ward of Not Sucking. By the way, did I introduce myself? I don't remember. Oh well, who cares? Bling it! New spin. See, I love that. I love that way more than Mario. I know I mentioned that an episode or two ago, but I do love that Luigi does a little dance. It just feels so much more victorious. Kojiro! As I now know, Nintendo Capri Sun saying, Why are you on my ship? Who invited you? guess Rosalina gets around. Anyway, I'm done with this episode. Tune in next time as we conclude the Gold Leaf Galaxy and the Toy Time Galaxy. See you guys then.